projectile motion. There are six basic motion equations that you can derive and then they are used to develop the formulas and answer problems. We won't be using any calculus here, but we will be using the constant acceleration equations from physics, otherwise known as the Suvite equations. Make sure you're familiar with those before you proceed. Let's check them out. So to set the scene, let's just describe what a projectile is. A projectile is an object that is flying through the air only under the influence of gravity, but we're not going to talk about force as much in this. So the path that the projectile is following is traced out by this black line here. We call that the line of trajectory. And when a projectile is fired, it's got an initial velocity, okay, and it's this V0. I'm going to use V0. Some people use capital V, some people just use V. I'm going to stick with V0. And it's got a projection angle theta. Okay, now the projection angle is always constant. As it starts flying through the air, uh, its velocity will change and the angle that it's traveling at will change if you're looking at the instantaneous velocity. But the initial velocity it was fired at and the initial angle it was fired at are constants. They do not change. So to derive these equations, what I'm going to do is I'm going to split the motion up into vertical and horizontal motion. I'm going to go through it in two columns like so. And as we work through this, I'm going to be drawing on our four equations of constant acceleration, these Suvat equations. But to get us started, we're just going to look at the horizontal motion here, and we're going to start with this acceleration. So as the object is flying through the air, what is its horizontal acceleration? Well, acceleration has to do with forces like pushes and pulls that happen horizontally, and there are none. We're assuming there's no air resistance here. Right, so the acceleration, and we're doing components, okay? The horizontal component of acceleration, anything pushing or pulling sideways, is zero. And that is actually our first equation. It's the acceleration in the horizontal direction. By the way, x, uh, the horizontal direction, that's the positive horizontal direction, the positive x. This is the negative x, okay, the negative horizontal direction. This is the positive vertical, this is the negative vertical. Now to look at the velocity in the horizontal direction, we're going to draw on one of our Suvat equations. We're going to use this one, the first equation. Okay, so we're going to be substituting in values for these, and you've got to think we're only dealing in the horizontal direction. So when we're looking at our variables, we're only dealing with horizontal components of velocity. So let's put them in. The horizontal component of velocity, I'm just going to call it Vx equals a horizontal component of the initial velocity, ux, plus, and the horizontal acceleration. The horizontal acceleration is zero, and our time variable. And we now need to look at the initial value of velocity, okay? When it was right down here at the very beginning when t equals zero, like a camera shot, if you took a photo right when it was launched, we want to examine the velocity at that particular instant. And to do that, I'm going to copy this v0 vector, okay, the velocity at the very start, okay, that t equals zero moment at the very beginning, when you took that photo, uh, that exact value for velocity here, I'm going to copy it down, and then I'm going to break it up into horizontal and vertical components, like this. Okay, so here we have two new vectors, okay, we've got v naught x, which is the horizontal component of the initial velocity, and v naught y, which is the vertical component of the initial velocity. Okay, and notice it's theta again, okay, because that was the initial angle that it was fired at. Okay, and V0, this length of this hypotenuse here reflects this value of V0, okay, the initial velocity that it was shot with. And note that vector sum of the two green component vectors V0x and V0y is equal to the red vector V0. Alright, so we're interested in this, so I'm just going to do a little trigonometry here, a little soccer toa. Alright, so we have theta, we have an angle. We have the hypotenuse here, which we know we're not really interested in this just yet. Okay, we're going to do vertical later. All right, so we've got this and this. I've got an angle, we've got the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. I'm going to use cosine. Cos theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. V naught. Let's multiply both sides by V naught times V naught. Okay, this is going to cancel out, and I'm going to flip it around and write it. V naught x equals V naught times cos theta. V naught cos theta. Okay, there's a multiplication sign in the middle there. 
bringing that over here now where does that go well this is actually v naught x is actually ux okay the initial value of velocity in the horizontal direction that is actually our v naught x putting those in we get vx equals v naught x is v naught cos theta v naught cos theta zero times t just disappears okay and this is our second equation Okay, for projectile motion. For our third one, we're going to go back to those Subart, okay, equations of constant acceleration again. And we're going to use this one, the fourth one. So putting those values into this equation. Remember, we're only dealing with the horizontal components of velocity here. Displacement, s in the horizontal direction, that's going to be x, okay? That's why they use s, because it could be vertical or horizontal. That just keeps it arbitrary until we decide. ut, that is the initial horizontal velocity, okay, uh, which is v naught x, v naught x times t plus a half. Acceleration in the horizontal direction is zero, as we said before, and times t squared. And let's figure out what this is, x equals v naught x, like we did before, that's v naught cos theta, v naught times cos theta times t, Plus, and this stuff here is multiplied by zero, so it's all just gone. And it's kind of the culture of mathematics and physics are. This might get confused for theta times t and then taking the cosine function of it. Just to avoid that confusion, I'm just going to slip the t back here. So x equals v naught times t times cos theta. Okay, and that is the third equation of projectile motion. And they are all the equations for the horizontal motion, okay, of a projectile. Now let's look in the vertical direction. So this time we are only imagining the vertical motion, okay? Just the vertical components of the uh, projectile motion. Okay, so vertically, what about the acceleration? Well, the acceleration is acceleration due to gravity. Very important here, a lot of people make mistakes with this. Vertically, so it's gonna be acceleration in the y direction this time. And our positive direction is this way, so our acceleration is negative, negative g. G, of course, is 9.81, depending on whatever you're asked to use. Simple as that, that is the first equation. But you've got to be careful here. G itself is never negative 10. If you ever see that, or negative 9.8, or negative 9.81, that is always wrong. The constant G is always equal to the positive value. Positive 10, positive 9.8, positive 9.81. If you ever have to work out the acceleration then, uh, for a particular object, it would then be plus g or minus g, depending on which direction is positive. But if you ever see g is a negative value, that is not right. Let's look at the velocity in the vertical direction. So we're going to use this equation again. This time we've got to think in the vertical direction. So we've got the vertical value for final velocity, or just the general vertical um, variable value of velocity, vy this time, vy equals u okay so this is the initial value of the velocity in the vertical direction which is going to be v naught y v naught y plus at okay and acceleration is minus g and t is the time variable of course so we need to know what is v naught y okay well let's come down here we're going to do sokotoa again because now we have the opposite we're going to do sine the s in sokotoa sine theta Sine is opposite v naught y over hypotenuse v naught. Multiplying both sides by v naught again. All right, canceling these out. Okay, we're going to flip it around again. So v naught y. Is v naught does not sound old. Should I say v zero y? Yes, it does sound old, but you are old, so it doesn't really matter. V naught y is going to be V naught sine theta. V naught sine theta. See, I just did it again. I said naught. Can't break the habit. Remember, there's a multiplication sign there. V naught times sine theta. All right, so let's put all the values in here. V y. V naught y is V naught sine theta. V naught sine theta minus gt. And that would be our fifth equation of projectile motion.
And to get our last one, we're going to look at this Suvite equation, okay? And we're thinking in the vertical component again of motion, okay? So vertically, our displacement is y. And our initial vertical velocity is v naught y times t plus one half times the acceleration in the vertical direction is minus g times t squared. Putting these values in. Y equals V naught Y is V naught sine theta times T minus a half G T squared. And again, I might just slip this T back over here. Okay, so Y equals V naught T sine theta minus one half G T squared. Okay, and that is the sixth and final equation of projectile motion. Why not number them? One, two, three, four, five, six. This may come up in a question, what happens if your projectile is actually being fired from a cliff? Okay, and you've got like a point here, zero, H. Okay, where H, capital H, is the height of the cliff, okay? And the projectile is going to follow this kind of motion. Higher, and it's going to go a little further and a little higher, okay? Well, what actually happens is this equation here changes, and it becomes plus H, okay? And the reason for that is if you now check this, if you put in T equals zero, okay? What will happen? This will disappear and this term will disappear and that will leave you with the y value being at h. Okay, where it should be. So when t equals zero, make sure that the projectile is up here where it should be in the beginning. So they are the six motion equations for projectile motion. It's definitely worth being able to derive those on your own. I'd seriously suggest that you give it a try. Remember, mathematicians don't memorize. So that's your homework. Be able to do this on your own without looking. It may take you a few goes, but it's definitely worth the time. As usual, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again real soon.